Thank you, Barbara, and everyone uh, for coming today. Uh, this is a very exciting program, so we're, I think, almost pretty soon to get it uh, finished and hopefully out in the public, but at least I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. And I need to look at my glasses, too, so I can see. Um, there are only four types of uh, people in the world. Uh, those who have been caregivers, those who currently are caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who need care caregivers. Uh, from all those four choices, I don't think we left anyone out. And that was uh, Rosalind Carter uh, who came up with that, and she has a Rosalind Carter Institute for Caregiving, where Patricia and I had the opportunity to go down to them uh, a couple years ago. It was, I think, uh, October of 2009, a very great organization. Now, when you are a caregiver, it's very challenging. It comes with little warning or preparation. You, know, you could be going to the store one day, and the next you might be diagnosed with something and weren't expecting it. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought Bob was changing my slides. Okay, then I didn't, I guess something new, okay. Oh, that's okay. There we go. A little technical difficulty. Um, new, new challenges and expectations are added to existing responsibilities for activities. I mean, if you aren't busy enough, when you become a caregiver, you have a lot more uh, more responsibilities and things to learn. And this kind of demonstrates that you have the whole world on your shoulders or like an octopus, you've got eight arms going everywhere from you know shopping, answering the phone, going to doctor's appointments. So it's uh, not an easy task. And as I said, you wear many hats. You're a nurse, a companion, a comforter, a liaison with professionals, uh, chief financial officer, decision maker, home repair specialist. I'd be very poor at that, so I, I would have to probably hire someone or my husband unless I'm caregiving for him. Uh, family counselor and diplomat, and many others. So, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Um, also, they often experience, because you aren't prepared, you think, am I going to be doing a great job or not? You know, they experience fear frustration and anger. You know, again, when your life changes, you know, you could go out and do things, be with your friends, and all of a sudden, you know, you aren't going to have that opportunity. Your life does change. You'll be feeling very tired. You'll feel a sense of inadequacy. You know, it's kind of like being a caregiver or maybe a new mother. You don't know what you're going to be doing, and am I doing something right or correct? Feeling very overwhelmed need to protect or keep secrecy. A lot of times people may not share what's going on in the family. They say, oh, everything's fine. Uh, so that's an issue. Need to, uh, God, I'll tell you these glasses. Need to protect, uh, dis you'll be disconnected with friends. Maybe you used to go out for lunch every week or every couple weeks with friends and you kind of pull away from that. Also, um, work conflicts. You know, you're going to be torn between, God, what do I do with my work? Do I go in, do the Family Leave Act, you know, et cetera. Family caregivers are at risk for clinically significant symptoms of depression, fair or poor health status, one or more chronic conditions or a disability, worsened eating and exercise habits. So a lot of times, you know, we don't take care of ourselves. You know, we have to make sure the other person, you know, gets to their doctor's appointments, making sure the meals are done, and we forget about ourselves. So it's really important to take care of, of ourselves. Uh, higher levels of stress. Uh, missing doctor's appointments. Again, you know, you have to, you're always out there taking your uh, person that you're doing the caregiving with to the doctor's appointments, making sure meals are prepared, house is cleaned, you know, whatever. But you have to remember to always take care of yourself. Strain on relationships, family, uh, just unfortunately it's a very stressful time. You can reduce these risks by, uh, by taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, socially, and spiritually. Uh, the patient is very important, but so are you. You have to remember to take time out for yourself, even if it's 10 minutes. You know, just to do some deep breathing, you're maybe going in a closet, yelling in a pillow, or just something to take care of yourself, please. You can also reduce this risk. I'm sorry, I can't, I'm at an odd angle for this thing. Um, issuing your part of the, making sure, in, excuse me, ensuring that you're part of the treatment team, 
Ask the questions. Go to your doctor's appointments. Be prepared. You know, have your questions ready because sometimes you'll leave and say, oh, gosh, I wish I would have asked the doctor that question. You know, be prepared. Be a part of the team. You have a right to help navigate your care also. You know, talk to the doctor what your concerns are. Uh, Involve other family members in the caregiving. You know, you don't have to do it by yourself. You know, get them involved. Let them know what's going on. Um, If someone lives far away, hey, maybe they can contribute monetary uh, value. You know, whether it's maybe paying for a housekeeper, helping an aide come in to help. But get your family members or your close friends involved so you are not doing it alone. Uh, Joining a a support caregiver group. You know, it's a a place where you can go and share your feelings. You know, sometimes it might be difficult to talk to the other person that you're being a caregiver for. You know, talk to other people in the same situation so that you know that you are not alone. Uh, The family caregiver support program purpose. Provide a venue for sharing stories and giving support. Increase your knowledge, skills, and strategies important to patient and self-care. You know, a lot of times when you're in support groups, it's an opportunity for you to say, hey, I don't know what to do about this. Well, someone else may have gone through that and can share their experiences with you and say, oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Or you can share something uh, to someone else. Introduce and encourage use of available resources and services. You know, it's funny. um, I used to be a program manager for community information referral. And you, you get a book and you have all these resources, but it's amazing going on the net, using books, using the social workers in the hospitals. There are a vast wealth of resources. So there are resources out there, and you just have to look. Sometimes the social workers will seek you guys out, but you know, always ask if you're in the hospital or doctor's office you know, where I can go get services. You know, services like ours, uh, the Arizona Myeloma Network, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, any of these types of organizations can be helpful to you. Family Caregiver Support Program and Survey Results. We took a survey last year, I guess it was, at our other conference. So these are the results. Da, da, da. We should have a little band thing. Drum roll. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, 100% of the survey respondents felt it was important to offer such a program. agreed that the role of caregiving and what it means to be important in the program. 76% wanted information on taking care of yourself, on building cooperative relationships, and on preventing and solving problems. Also some more results. Some proposed topics to include how to involve other family members how to develop a support structure, how to talk to a cancer patient about their cancer, and understanding changes patient and caregivers go through during this time. These are all important topics and we hope to include those in our program. Family caregiver support uh, program format, they felt bi-weekly or monthly in two hour sessions, groups of eight eight to 10, led by a trained local facilitator, and uh, shared teaching and learning. Those are the format that they would like. And these are just a few pictures of our caregivers that are currently um, in in this room or, you know, that we've had at other conferences. But I guess the most important things, caregivers, please take care of yourself. You're very important, and if you don't take care of yourself, then you might not be able to take care of the person you're caregiving for. And I'll be in one of the later sessions today uh, with Barbara. Thanks.